Okay, so um, you know, you've watched you know three videos about optimization and, and trying to find maximums and minimums, and then um, this video here. Uh, we're you know we're just gonna um, see the features of our calculator because on the AP exam um, there are two sections where you can use a calculator and and they the you know the the College Board definitely uh, encourages students to know all of the features of the calculator. All right, so um, we're gonna see how our calculator can help us answer some of the questions that maybe we, you know we've seen before. Just let them you know let's look at that technology. So the very first one is uh, you know how many times does the graph of x times cosine of three x change concavity over this interval? And so concavity changes are when the second derivative changes signs. Um, and if you were just looking at just the normal function at the curvature, it may be hard to see uh, all the curvature changes, especially with a cosine function or a sine function or functions that might change quite often. But if we can measure the second derivative, think about when you're looking at the second derivative, concavity changes when the second derivative changes signs. So if you were looking at the second derivative graph, it's easy to locate where it changes signs because it's where the second derivative would cross the x-axis. So I'm going to graph this and let the calculator actually compute the second derivative's graph. It's actually really cool. So um, make sure your calculator's in radian mode. And let me go ahead and pull up my um, calculator um, that I have, oops, not that. Uh, here. Okay, so um, so I already have, um, you know, uh, the function typed in. I've already checked to make, you know, to make sure that I'm in radian mode. And then um, I probably should also check my window because we said only from zero to three. So let's look at our window. Um, yeah, during the... Um, during the pandemic in, in the spring, we lost our license. It just the time uh, expired uh, to uh, my uh, TI Smart View that's on my calculator. So I have to use this as just um, an online version. So, so it's okay. Um, so um, zero, two, three. Okay. Um, now, here's the thing with the Y, min, and max. If I'm eventually just interested in where the second derivative's graph crosses the x axis, I don't need a large Y uh, range. So I'm just going to go from negative one to one. Now, go back to Y equals and arrow down so you are in Y2. And I'm going to let the calculator, uh, I'm going to give it a command. So what I want to do is I want to input the derivative here. So um, it's under math. And then um, I want to go uh, to the nth derivative. And if you have an updated um operating system like this one is, you're going to get a really cool pretty print like the DDX, right? If it doesn't, um, it just has like uh, n derive, right? Then um, you, I'll explain after I put this in, like what that would look like. So for us, though, um, if you have this, if this, you have this operating system, um, we're taking the derivative with respect to x, so we need to put an x there, and we also need to let the computer know or the calculator know that our variable is x. So put that x there. Now, here's the thing: this open parentheses, can you you can put any function you want there. Or since I already have a function defined in Y1, we can just call that Y1. And it's great for terms of programming because then anytime you change Y1, the command for the derivative is already saved in Y2. And I would encourage you to say that, say, uh, to save that. So we want to input Y2 there. So there's a couple places you can find Y2. Uh, one of them is under um, VARS, your variable key, which is right here. So hit VARS. It's a Y variable. And it's a function, and it's y1. So notice that when I arrow down, this is the derivative of y1. Um, and that way, whatever I change y1, it'll automatically measure the derivative. Okay. Now, let's say you have old school, like my mine used to be. If you have an old school calculator, then um, uh, yep, there you go. Uh, then your command would be it's all so it's going to pull up like uh, n derive. So I'll try to write this messily. So what you're going to do is you're going to type in y1 just like we did, comma x, comma x. So that's like the programming language that you would need. And um, make sure you use commas to separate these. And you do need double x's, just like we did too. Because like the first x tells you, or I should say tells the calculator, what variable is the function written in. And then the second x tells the calculator what variable to take the derivative with respect to. 
Okay. So, and if you want to know where the commas are, remember the comma is located um, up here right above the sevens. Okay. Now, as long as you're putting in the first derivative, let's put the second derivative of second derivative in as well. So let your cursor be flashing on y3 and go back to um, vars. Oh, no, sorry. First, I need to tell the derivative. So math, it's um, n derive right there, number eight, the derivative, nth derivative. Uh, and then we put an x here and we put an x here. And then now to get the second derivative of y1, it's the derivative of y2. So we now we want to put y2 there. So now, you again, you could find that under vars, and then y vars function hit y2. Now, I mentioned there are two ways to find that. There's a, there's a shortcut, again, depending on your operating system. So let's say I cleared that out. Um, with my cursor there, if you actually hit, um, uh, it's, uh, it, there, it's hard to see in mine, but it's, it's, um, it's in green. It's F4 up here. It's above, like above that trace. So if you hit alpha, F4. Um, I have a shortcut menu of all my Y vars. Um, and so it's defaulted if you have this operating system. So, so it's a quick way to get Y2 in there. And then it's like, awesome. Now, right now, all three are highlighted, which means the calculator is going to graph all three. And it gets really messy. Um, unless you've got a, ca a color calculator, we can, you know, categorize those. Um, but we really only need the th second derivative. So what I'm going to do is going to arrow over and let it flash on the equal sign and hit, and hit enter. And it turns off the view of that graph. Hit enter here. Turns off the view of that graph. So now the only thing that is highlighted is the third function, which would be the second derivative of this. And that's exactly what I want. I want to measure the second derivative um, you know, in, 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 in order to find the concavity changes, I'm going to see where that second derivative crosses the x-axis. So now I am ready to graph. Now it's going to take some time because even though we only see one graph, it's computing three separate functions. Um, and so it'll take time. Notice up here in this uh, right side here, we have um, it thinking and processing. So it does take time, um, but you just have to be patient and wait. Um, and the nice thing too on the calculator portion of the exam is um, there are multiple questions that don't need a calculator. So you could be letting your calculator process and think and, and then uh, be solving other ones. So, okay. So it looks like there's just one, right? It changes concavity just once right here um, for our function. Oh, ha. Wow, it took me so long to figure this out because I thought there was one more than one. Um, you probably are screaming at me that that wasn't the function, Mr. Brown. Change it to 3x. So now, <laughs> um, now be careful because I, as soon as you edit it, um, it highlights that. So I want to de-highlight that. Now graph, just the second derivative. Um, well, remember, 3x changes the frequency of our function. 3 is going to be three times as fast because our wavelength is three times uh, or a third as short. So um, that's going to affect our concavity changes. And so I should expect more than one. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily like three times as many because I have the other coefficient of x in front, other variable. So we've got uh, at least uh, concavity changes. We're looking for when it crosses. Um, and actually, it looks like it crosses three times, right? It crosses here, here, and here. So those are definite sign changes. It changes signs three different times, okay? Now, um, I would recommend saving these, right? Like that we don't have to reprogram them. So you could just clear this out, and you still have your derivatives programmed in there. So that's a really, really smart thing to do. Okay, um, let's look at just one more in this video, um, just to, you know, just as long as I'm, I'm talking here. Um, so let's see, what else does it say? It says, um, oh, nice. Um, it says a particle's velocity, sorry, particle moves along a straight line with velocity given by this particular function. So um, what is the acceleration of the particle when time equals three? So Remember, acceleration is the derivative of velocity, and our calculator can do that too. So let's type in this function, 7 minus the quantity um, of 1.01. .01. So let's do 7 minus the quantity of 1. Oops, I got an arrow down here. 0 0.01 um, raised to the power. I thought it said negative t squared or negative x squared, but um, let's just double check that because I could certainly have um, 
misread that. Uh, negative t squared. Cool. Uh, from time is uh, positive. What is acceleration when t equals three? Fantastic. Okay. So um, I don't need the second derivative turned on, so I'm going to turn that off. And then um, what I'm going to do is uh, go to my window and go from zero. Okay, zero. Now I want to know at three, so maybe I'll go a little bit farther than three, which is five. And um, you know, I, I don't know if I might need these bigger to see a picture. So maybe I'll go to negative five to positive five as well. Okay, and let's graph and see what this looks like. And we may not see anything. I might have to adjust my window. Because if I'm starting at seven, I probably should go a little bit higher, shouldn't I? So let's go back to my window and let's go up to um, maybe even this like, I don't know, like 12. And then let's see what this graph looks like now. Oh. Silly Mr. Brown. Um, so if you are accidentally graphing something you don't want to and it's taking a long time, you can hit second off and it stops the process. But um, I realized that I wanted to change my y value, not my x value. So change that to a 12. Okay, it's 13. <laughs> All right, here we go. So here's our, um, you know, it looks very linear. Uh, that's our velocity. Okay, so um, I want to find the acceleration at a particular point. Well, since the acceleration is the derivative of velocity, remember there's another way to calculate derivatives from a graph. It's under second, calculate, and is right there, dy dx, number six. So, so we saw this earlier this year. So number six. Now, here's our function, and it doesn't really prompt us what to do, and this is one thing I don't like. So when I do invite and invent my new calculator, I'll make it better for this, but as soon as you hit three, um, it says at x equals 3, that's what you want to evaluate, hit enter, and it'll say what your derivative is, dy dx is equal to 0.0545879. So it can calculate numeric derivatives um, very nicely. And so then I think this was multiple choice, right? So look for that response, uh, point, oh, it looks like it's b. So um, again, our calculator does um, numeric derivatives. It could also graph derivatives, which is really useful. Um, uh, you know, and, and um, you know, I want to do probably one more video to look at example three and example four, again, just to make sure that you guys um, feel comfortable using this. So, so um, you know, not a lot of quote unquote work, but definitely really, really useful information.